I was getting my offering ready. I was like, praise the Lord. I'm like, Mo, Lo and Mo, you got to go. That's why I told them in the morning. Hey, man, they did great, didn't they? Come on, you excited about the Lord? Come on, praise Jesus. Everybody, everybody all excited about school? Whoa, all you parents should have been screaming harder than that. Come on, you're not excited about school? All the kids are like, boo. All the parents are like, mercy. Just kidding. I like having the kids around. Kids are cool. They got, they're bringing life. Amen. Hey, look, I got, I got a scripture for you. I think it's going to be, it's going to be life changing. Amen. A couple of these scriptures. I gave you one already. I want you to know about your giving makes room for you. Amen. And a greater blessing. I want you to look at me, look with me, <laughs> excuse me, 2 Corinthians 9, 7. 2 Corinthians 9, everybody say 9 and 7. We're going to get in this thing. Amen. Look at this right here. I mean, you know, the Bible's true about what it says about me and you. Look what it says about giving. It says every time you give, right, we give, we give, and we understand that giving brings increase. Okay? Giving brings increase. If you can't, there's laws of the principles of the kingdom of heaven. They work different than natural wisdom. Natural wisdom says keep what you have. Spiritual wisdom says give away what you have, and more will come back. Some people might say, well, I'm financially secure. I don't need. That's not what I'm saying. It's not about what you need, okay? Now get this. It's not about what you need. It's about what you can sow. It's beyond you. Giving at the level of where I give to sow. See it? Look what it says here, though. As you purpose in your heart, give, not grudgingly or of necessity. But watch what it says on the tail end of this. It says, God loves a cheerful giver. So that means there's got to be joy in my seed. Okay? Okay? Now, they got a text to give. They give it up there. If you want to text and give and do all that stuff, I run through that sometimes a little fast. But I want you to get this. Now, watch this. Now, we go back to our scripture in a minute, right? So, I got to give cheerfully. The text to give is up there. I don't know if people you know how to do all that, the RCF. Give. So, get this. My seed, okay? And you can stay there if they need to see it longer, whatever they need. Um, my seed... Is going to make access for my financial increase, but I got to prepare it right. You see that? This is what I'm saying. Now, I was saying this in the morning service because what we've done is we're starting to learn principles. I got to claim what I need. Now, I want you to look at this Psalms, okay? I need you to get this. Go to Psalm 67, okay? We're going to start with like f verse 5, okay? Now we got this thing, right? I got to be cheerful in my giving. Now, this is what I'm saying. Listen to me. Principles. You got to follow God's principles in order. And in his, it's, let me tell you. Look at me. When you have the principles, you don't even need faith. Come on. They don't want to hear me. Do you get what I just said? You don't even need faith. You're going to bring faith into the table. But it's like this. When you got the principles, it's going to produce does that make sense? Like, once it's in, you ain't getting out. There's certain things you do. You put a machine, you know, you get a machine program. When they punch the numbers in on them machines and go, go, back up, man. The machine's going to do the work, right? Come on. That's it. Done. I program it in. Bang. Just step back. It's going to start doing what it does. Why? Principles. You get divine print. Oh, my God. We should be so excited when we talk like this. These are divine principles of heaven. Look what he said. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Now watch the next scripture. Then the earth shall give its increase. Now wait. Now watch now. I'm, I'm young people, you better catch me. Your, your life is easy. Just listen. Don't, don't just, everybody listen. But young people, man, you pave your own road. You 20 years old, just... Start using these principles today. We're claiming what we need because the Bible said ask. We're telling the enemy we break your power because we don't want him getting in there. We're sowing seed, <coughs> not sparingly, but abundantly because we understand a farmer only gets a return on the seed he sows. Now you're giving me the element of praise. I got this thing surrounded. I can't screw it up. What do you mean? I got my seed in the ground. Are you getting this? There's an anointing on this right now. 
I got seed in the ground because the Bible said give. I'm beyond the tithe. So are you. I need increase in my life. Now I'm giving. Then wait a minute, time out. The Bible said what? We tell, the see, listen, I'm saying something. Money is not in heaven. Money's in the earth. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get you the money. It's in the earth. So what I do? Claim what you need. Break the power of the devil. Loose the angels. Hebrews 11 says, I mean, Hebrews 1 says what? It says that me, angels are ministering spirit for us to go and get our stuff. You're binding the devil. You're loosing the angels. And now I've got the element of praise to tell God, I'm going to praise you. The earth starts to rattle when you praise and increase starts being released from all the four corners of the earth. My God in heaven, I don't know about you, but I'm getting ready to step in another dimension of wealth that I've never even seen before. I'm, I'm going to preach myself into the thing. Somebody's going to come with me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put myself in another dimension of wealth I've never even understood before. I'm gonna, you're going to put yourself in another level of wealth you've never, what, you, I'm telling you what the Bible said. I'm going to claim it. I'm going to believe it. I'm going to sow for it. I'm going to tell the devil, get your hand off my stuff because I got dominion for it. And now you really messed me up, Pastor Chris, because the Bible said, then the earth shall release the increase by my praise. The minute I start thinking maybe something didn't happen with the money, I'm going to go praise the Lord. Maybe I get a little financial problem in my business. Praise the Lord. Maybe something just gets a little fun. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let all, let all the earth praise him. Oh, my God in heaven. Praise the Lord. Let all the people praise him. See, this is what happens. Say, well, you know, Pastor Chris, I'm not excited about it. You ain't excited about it because you didn't get a revelation of it yet. I got a revelation of it. I got a seed in the ground. Come on, somebody. I got a seed in the ground. You hear me? You, who got a seed in the ground? I got a seed in the ground. I told the Jesus what I need. How many told Jesus what you need financially? You got to ask. How many told the devil, get out of here. You can't have my stuff. I said, how many told the devil? I break your power. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. How many lose some angels? Amen. Have you tell your angels, go get your stuff? Yeah. I'm telling you, it's the order. How can you screw this up? You know how? You don't do it. But you know more. No, you don't know enough. Praise him. Oh, I got the last piece of this puzzle. I'm going to praise him. You want to know why? What I tell you what worship does? Worship takes my focus off of where I want to put it and puts it on God. You like this. Where's the money? You in the earth. Listen, y'all got business people in here. We got people in here. They got pressure. You got life. You down here. When's it going to come in? Man, that's pressure. I got people who got pressure in life. Where's it coming from? Praise the Lord. It's taking your attention off of where it should not be and puts it where it should be. Praise the Lord. Pray, let, let the earth yield their increase. Praise the Lord. And my God shall bless me. Oh, my God in heaven. My God's going to bless me. My God. Then your God shall bless you. Mo, will you what you say? God's going to bless me. My God in heaven. Lift your hands to heaven. Come on, lift your hands to heaven. There's a holy moment. As the ushers come right now, as they come right now, as they come, I want you to hold your seat in your hand. I want you to declare and decree something. Declare and decree it. Declare and decree it. Declare and decree it. Declare and decree it. Right now. Right now. You tell the Lord what you need. Right now. This is a holy moment. Tell the Lord what you believe it for right now. Right now. No, you tell him how much. I'm believing for $5, $50, $1,000, You got to have equivalent seed now. You can't be giving God three bucks and expect it for three million. You're out in a place your faith can't take you. But tell him what you need. I'm believing I receive. I'm believing I receive. And loose the angels right now. Say, angels, I loose you right now on my behalf. Go get my stuff. And devil... I break your power. I break your power right now in Jesus' name. And now I got some praise. Now thank the Lord like something happened right now. I thank you, Lord. Praise like it's going to happen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. They got a little bumper for you, and we're going to get right in this thing. Hallelujah. Glory. We ain't even going to go in the bumper. Glory to God. 
Praise the Lord. They just want me right off the hook. All right, let's go. You ready to go? Praise God. Matthew 6, 13. How many of you ready to get in the Word? We've been in this series about Dragon Slayer, amen? How many of you like it? What kind of church talk about the Dragon Slayer, amen? What kind of church that's winning, amen? Glory to God. You guys are winning. I'm so happy you're here while the, while the, while the team's just kind of doing its thing, amen? Getting you ready. We're going to get you ready. Preach it through another dimension, amen? You ready to go today? Will you promise me something today? Believe what I tell you about the Bible. If you went to the doctor and the doctor said, hey, we went in there and we see this, would you believe him? Some things, you know what I'm saying? He said, hey, you got to, you know, do this, do that, your pressure or something like that. You believe him, right? You go to a financial planner, a financial planner tells you, hey, you got to put such and such amount of money away, help you a little bit. Would you believe him? Why'd you go if you didn't believe him? You go to a car mechanic, pull in there and go, I got this little tinker, tink, 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 tink. I don't know what it is. He says, oh, that's your thing over there or whatever. Gizmo. Would you believe him? Probably. Right? Everywhere you go, you get advice, right? Go to school, you get advice. Go here. Go to dance class, you get advice, right? How, do I, how you spin right and all that stuff? Right? Go to ice skating, you get advice, right? Go to mortgage guy, say, hey, can I, can I afford this house? He'll tell you. Things you guys do, right? Got to go get some parts made, right? Go in there. Can I do? Yeah, you can. Come to church and you know everything. No, I'm not being, I'm, well, if you, I told you, if you don't trust me, you're in the wrong place. It, uh, some people won't talk like this. I'm going to talk, if you don't trust me, you need to leave and go find some guy you trust. But I'm going to tell you right here now, you better qualify. I go to the church around the street. You're crazy. I better tr- I'm going to trust you with my, I'm going to trust you with my life. I got to trust you with my money. I got to trust you, man. You, I'm going to make mistakes. I'm human, but I, I, you got to trust me with a lot of stuff. You got to trust somebody. I trust the guy on the TV. You crazy. I got to know you. Know that when you need me, I'm going to be here. It's two-way street, this thing. Trust me what I'm telling you spiritually today. Well, I, got, I ain't lying to you. Why would I lie to you? I love you too much. I never lie to you. I told somebody something about a month ago. I knew it was going to cost me them. I knew when it come out of my mouth, I said, it's going to cost me them. They're going to leave. Now you a puppeteer or you a man of God? Because you want to keep somebody bad enough, you'll just say anything. But if I love you enough to watch you grow, I got to say what I got to say. Ain't this fun? I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you how it goes. That's the way it is, man. It ain't easy. Because you want to know what? Once you start listening to me, then the battle's on. See, the battle ain't when you sit here and just visit. The battle becomes when you say, you're my voice to get me someplace. Now all the hell's going to fight you to get away from me. That's how it works. Always been like this. Yeah, I'm telling you. It's true. Once you say, I'll submit to it, now you got to fight. You're going to fight all the hell in the beginning. Because it don't want you near the anointing. That could take your life to another dimension. But once you ride through that period, we're going to be all right because we be lifers. Amen. It's going to be okay. I ain't scaring you. I'm just telling you the truth. People go to church like, I don't know what's going on. I know exactly what's going on. You got an enemy in your life, amen? Look at this. Let's just get in the Word of God. And what I was saying, that I'm never saying that to be theatrical for you. I want you to understand something, man. You got to trust somebody. Trust what I'm telling you. I'm telling you what the Bible says. Believe it about yourself, amen? Here we go. And you got to get, and let me tell you right now, you got to get in church. Here we go. Let's just get it over with. You got to get in here. You ain't strong enough to make it on your own out there some seasons. You need somebody to come in there. I'll preach you to a place of strength. And then you leave and you go back and get back at it. Amen? There are going to be seasons you got to get in here. Amen? And load you up and send you out. And load you up and send you out. And load you up and send you out. Why? Because when you come in here, I'm going to make sense to your life. Everything's talking to you. Everything's talking to you. My God in heaven, everything's talking to you. Amen? Come on. Lose with me right now. You got Matthew chapter 6 up there. Let's look at this. Jesus knew it was coming. What am I trying to tell you? There is an enemy in the earth trying to take your stuff. Amen? The enemy is coming. Look what it says. It says, lead us not into temptation. I'm not trying to make you, like, conscious of the enemy, but I'm making you conscious that you have an adversary. Is that okay? The Bible says your adversary walketh about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may destroy. What's that mean? I got an adversary. He's coming to take your peace. He's coming to take your mental space. He's coming to take your finances. He's coming to take your health. He's coming to take stuff. You have an adversary that's coming against you. Whether you believe it or not, it's true. So 
And I said, well, nobody told me. It was amazing to me last week when I was talking about the principles of how the earth works and how that the devil is the god of this world, the second Corinthians revelation, that he has dominion right now, that he stole from Adam and is ruling and reigning in the earth. But the church has a higher place of authority seated above all principalities and all powers and over all the works of the devil. But here's the key. You've been given authority. You've been delegated authority, but you got to use it because it doesn't come by autopilot in the earth because the earth is underneath the influence of the enemy. Why do you think you see the hate you see in the earth? That's a spirit, man. You yelling at people and you what you yelling at people for? The people don't know. They're just pawns in a game. Can you, can you stay with me and hear me, please? Over there yelling about something. The earth is underneath the influence of steal, kill, and destroy. I didn't do that. Steal, kill, and destroy. Are you with me? Why do you think evil's in the earth, hatred's in the earth? Because there's a devil behind all of it. And if you, listen to me, if you subject yourself to it, you will become a person that is influenced demonically and not even knowing it. God ain't got no hate. God's a God of love. Amen? But God's what? God ain't the God. Well, look at the earth and let's just patty cake, patty cake, patty cake. No, that thing is foolishness running rampant. And the church supposed to sit there and be quiet. It's ungodly principles that should not be expected to be received by the church. And it's not because you ain't loving somebody. I'm loving you enough to tell you the truth that God said that ain't right. And if you don't want to serve God, that's your own business. But I ain't going to sit here and watch you pave a road to hell and sit there and go, oh, yeah, the church is behind it because we love you. No, the truth is this. If you want to reject the truth, that's your own business. But I love you enough to tell you the truth. Amen. Come on, you understand what I'm saying? Amen. Why people hating people? I'll tell you exactly why. You've got a devil that hates everybody. He wants to kill everybody. wants to divide. Steal. Everybody say steal. steal. Kill. Steal. And destroy. That's the devil. So if you see it. And it lines up under one of those kind of things. Guess what? But you say it's people. Well, no, duh. People are spiritually moved. You were spiritually moved to come here this morning. You ever hear like people do something wild out there? Something told me to do it. Well, that wasn't God. Come on, guys. Get with it. So we have an adversary. Well, what do you think he's doing? He's talking about your marriage in your head. Where'd you get that idea? Oh, now here we go. Now you're locating me now. He's talking about your marriage in your head. Where are you going to get the money? He's, that's his idea. God said, I'll meet all your needs according to my riches and glory. Yo, divorce ain't never come. Now, I understand people have been through stuff. Hear me. But guess what? Divorce never come in your head because God thought it was a good idea. I'm just telling you the truth. Somebody picked it up and said, listen, I understand you can't get along with some people in the world, but whose idea was that? I open that Bible and say, you open that Bible, we'll figure a way. How about this? Unforgiveness is in God's idea. We can open up that book and figure out how to forgive one another. That's not easy, but it's doable because God gave us grace. We got an enemy talking in your head. Just because he's invisible doesn't mean he's imaginary. He's real. He has thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. He comes to you. Who said you yeah, look in the mirror and you think this about you? Who told you that? That didn't come from God. Are you here? Who's speaking? How does he speak in this realm? I don't want to get into all that nonsense. I just need you to get an understanding of this. I, 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 look, people are going through real stuff. You know, depression and, and this stuff that people go through, and, 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 and basically people go through, they go through being depressed. They go through clin clinically sometimes. Uh, areas of life where they, they feel they don't they feel unworthy. They go through these seasons of depression, these bouts and stuff. Where's this stuff coming from, man? I understand, you know what I'm saying? Where do you think these ideas are coming? Where's this pressure coming from? All that stuff's coming from fear. It all starts in fear. Every phobia in that arena of depression. Now listen, if you're taking medicine, take medicine. I ain't talking about that. But hear me, if this is there, where is that coming from? It ain't coming from love, power, and a sound mind. It's coming from the spirit of fear over here, but the problem is the church sitting there trying to medicate and patty cake over here, which you need to be dealing with spiritually over there. 
But we don't know no better. We're walking in a natural world thinking it's not spiritual. There is nothing natural about the world you're walking in. This is a spiritual environment. Amen. And there was nothing. And the earth was no form and no void. And there was no abyss. It was nothing. And God said, light be. And creativity left God and started creating everything that you and I see and live in. It was a spoken word, and by it we understand that the world was framed by words. It's a spirit world you're walking in right now. So let me ask you a question. Everybody look at me. We're getting ready to go. Why in the world am I in a spirit world playing by natural rules? You're going to lose. you got to get spiritual. Let me explain to you, right? Check this out. I'm going to show you that everybody has to understand something. This thing's more spiritual than you think it is. More sp- Why? Well, you know, stuff's happening. Well, stuff, you got to stop getting some stuff from happening. Amen? Look at this. Jesus said it like this. Jesus knew it was coming. Number one, Jesus knew it was coming. Look at, Luke, look at Matthew 6.13. Okay? Matthew 6.13. P- put that up there, and we're going to get in here, and I want you to see this. I'm telling you what. It's going to help you if you understand it. Lead us not what? But deliver us from what? For thine is the kingdom and the power and the what? Glory, right? In the Greek translation, it says this, and lead us not, deliver us from the evil one. What do you mean the evil one? He said, look, he says you got an adversary. If you got an adversary, then guess what? You better be taking some time to make sure I resist the adversary. Jesus knew it was coming. Check this part. In the Greek, here's the key. Accurately reads this, deliver us from the evil one. You are in a spiritual world, guys. Hello? And you have to understand that the evil one is working in the spiritual realm, and you just see it in the natural realm. Hello? If you've got strife in your house right now, right, that didn't start off as strife in the house. That started out with an idea over here from a spirit realm. Hello? If you got something in the natural realm right here, there's something in the spirit realm that got that thing started. I was telling them in the morning service, right? Check this out. This is really good. This is like a mega point. I want you to stay with me, okay? You really got to get this. Jesus was on a ship sleeping. He honestly, he's sleeping on a pillow. Just sleeping on a pillow. The boat starts taking on water, and what they say? Don't you care we're going to die? Jesus goes like this. He said, look, I ain't, what you mean you want to die? Don't you got no faith? I'm being very, very transparent with my, my, my Bible interpretation right here. He goes, right? He goes, what, what you mean, don't you care I'm going to die? He said, no, 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 no. He said, you ain't going to die. Where's your faith at? So Jesus goes like this. And what? He rebukes the wind and he tells the sea, peace be still. Wait a minute now. Watch this. Jesus is asleep on a pillow, and as he's sleeping on the pillow, he said, you know what? Don't worry about this. Have faith and understand this. I'm going to tell you what he does. He stands there and goes like this. The imagination is a very wild thing. He looks to the wind and says, stop. And then he tells the what? See Peace be still. What did he say? He said this. He said, he spoke into the realm of the unseen first and dealt with it. And then he spoke into the realm of what could be seen next. Oh, you better get that. That's a principle right there. Change your life. You better get, you ain't paying attention. Y'all too busy looking around. What's going on? You better pay attention. He, because you just missed, and the revelation go flying by. I don't know what you're saying. You got to lock into what I'm saying because he don't want you to know this stuff. I'm going to do it one more time. You better pay attention. It went right by your head. How do I know? I'm good at this. Here we go. He's sleeping. Night, night, nap time. He's on his pillow. Water starts coming over the side of the boat. Jesus is like, hey, they freak out. What do we do? Jesus said, no. Why don't you have no faith? To do what I'm getting ready to do. Let me show you how to do it. And he what? He spoke to the wind. Why you speak to the wind? You can't see no wind. He said, wind, 
you stop what you're doing because you're coming from some other dimension and the effect of you is making this water become rough. I'm going to deal what is spiritually need to be dealt with first and then I'm going to deal with naturally needs to be dealt with next. Come on, somebody. You got to start dealing with some stuff spiritually first and then you can deal with the natural. You can't just go out the natural and hit it. It won't change it. Because watch what happened. Peter did the same thing. I bid you call. Jesus, that you? You look like a ghost out on the water. What do I do? Oh, my God. What do I do? What do I do? He said, come out here. Peter's like, yay, let's walk on water. This is great. I'm walking on water. Look at me now. And the Bible said he saw the wind. You can't see the wind. You can't see the wind. Go outside. See the wind. You don't see no wind. You can see the effects of the wind and hear the effects of the wind, but you can't see the wind. The wind's invisible. You see it? Jesus even said the Holy Ghost is like a wind. You can't see him, but you can see him moving. Come on. You can't see it with your eye, but you can see him moving. What was he saying, guys? Come on. You see it? He said, look. He said, you got to deal with what's invisible and then deal with what's with natural. We get too busy caught up just with the natural. We miss the behind the scenes is why is making it move. Peter sank because he saw the wind. He didn't see the wind. He saw the effects of the wind. Jesus dealt with the wind and the sea and picked them up drowning in the lake. Why is that? Some of you drowning right now because you don't know what to speak to. You got to know what to speak to and when to speak to it. Come on, somebody. You got to speak the word of the Lord. Amen. Come on, we got to start speaking to some stuff. We got to start talking to some stuff. We got to start declaring some stuff. We got to start decreeing some stuff. We got to start explaining. We got to start speaking the word of God. Amen. We're going to talk about it, but you got to speak the word. You got to believe there's power in this word to change your situations, to change your circles, and speak to some stuff. Let some light in. Amen. Where light is, darkness cannot be. Amen. So let's look. Check this out. Here's another one. Write this down. Number two Jesus didn't bring this mess. Amen? Jesus didn't bring it. This is so important. Principle number two is this. Let no man say, First James chapter 1, verse 13, let no man say when he is tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither he tempteth any man. God didn't bring temptation. You can't stand against some stuff if you think God brought it. If you don't understand the character of God, you're going to think God brought some of this junk in your life and just stand there and go, well, I guess the Lord's just kind of like, you know, he's just kind of teaching me some things or I'm kind of going through a season of this or I got to struggle because, you know, the Lord's, you know, doing all this weird processing or something. No, no, no. How can you stand against the enemy if you don't know you got one? Let no man say when he's what? When he's tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither he tempteth he any man. Look at the next verse. Keep going. Watch this part. This will change your life if you get this. God don't bring no temptation. God doesn't bring this mess in your life. Amen? I'm telling you. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. What's that mean? Sometimes we have desires we should not have. That doesn't mean just like uh, sensual desires. Sometimes we desire stuff we're not supposed to have. Amen? Sometimes we get in a place where we want something we don't need to have right now, and it produces a greater struggle in our life. But here's my question. Who brings temptation? James said it in earlier. He said, well, he said, don't think it a strange thing. Sometimes this trial that's coming for your faith, this temptation or test. First Peter said this. He said, it's a fiery trial of faith. What's going on? You got to think about what's going on. The enemy sometimes tries to, but here's my question to you. How am I going to stand if I don't know who's bringing the drama? Okay, watch this. You got a teenager in the house, right? They get a little lippy or something starts going on down. What do you all do? Well, you know, it's growing pains. Right? Or it's this, that, and the other thing. No, 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 no. Strife tries to come in the house. You start having marital problems, and you got strife trying to show up in your house. You make excuse for it. Well, you know, we've got the seven-year itch. you got, what do you call it, seven-year itch or whatever it is? You got a seven-year itch, nothing. You got a mess in your house trying to come in there and dominate, dominate it. You know what I'm saying? Kid comes home one day, I don't want to do. Yeah, here we go. We got some atmospheric stuff we got to fix. Hey, man, I'm not picking just on that. I'm just talking about in general. You ever go through some seasons that are so hard? Seems like you can't make it and stuff like that. Jesus said this. He said, I've got a way for you to get out of every season of life. Amen. 
Don't listen, I'm gonna tell you what, I'm gonna tell on the enemy. The enemy tries to overwhelm you with stuff. Jesus said, Don't worry about it, I got a way out. Look right here. Look at this. The devil tempted Jesus, but guess what? Jesus got to find you a way out. First Corinthians 10 13. Just remember, there's some battles you're fighting. God did not bring them by design to challenge who you are. Are you here? Look, you're like, Pastor Chris, I don't know what you're talking about. That money struggle didn't come from God. That marriage struggle didn't come from God. That drug struggle didn't come from God. That inferiority complex you got didn't come from God. That fear thing didn't come. Are you getting it now? That fear thing didn't come from God. That lack of somebody loving you thing didn't come from God. That jacked up marriage didn't come from God. These things are not by God's design. Now listen, everybody's got them. You understand what I'm saying? But God came to give us what? Life and life more abundantly. Amen? What's trying to get in my house to mess up my peace? What's trying to get into the family sector of life? And you got to fight for your family. You got to fight for your kids. You got to fight for your marriage. You got to fight for your finances. You got to fight for everything because something's trying to come and take the stuff that God gave you through free will. And don't just stand in like some quiet little Christian. Oh, it's okay. Oh, I'll make all right in the sweet by and by. You better be quiet. Throw the sweet by and by away and start winning in the earth. That business you got, God gave you. That stuff you got, God gave you. That job, that position, that enemy that's trying to come and take you. You got to stand there with your mouth wide open and say, no way, uh uh-uh, you ain't getting in it. Do I got to tell this to people? No, don't say nothing to people. People don't, just be quiet. Shut the door by yourself and say, I praise the Lord, amen. I got dominion over this house, over the kids, over the family, over this stuff. Ain't nobody going to be sick. Ain't nobody going to be broke. Ain't nobody going to die. Everybody going to live and not die. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. We just had a thing. We were in Raleigh preaching, you know, and the kid got sick. The one guy's from local kid. He got sick, you know, bad. Brought him in the hospital, brought him out of the hospital, brought him in the hospital. They're like, oh, my God, he's on. Call me in the morning. They're like, he's life or death right now. Young guy. said, life or death. They said, they, they said, you better pray. This joker might not make it. I said, he's going to live and not die. Declare the works of the Lord. Well, who are you? I'm the man of God. So are you. Woman of God? Why can't you? The devil's under your feet. He's under your feet. So I'm sorry. Well, I don't know what to do. That's why you go to church, learn what to do. You do what I tell you to do. You fake it and figure it out later. You don't think that's true? I know it's true. I'm going to tell you how I learned. Right? I watch R.W. Shambach. You ever watch Shambach? You ever see Shambach? I was R.W. Some Shambach. I'm watching Shambach. I'm sitting there one day. I said, Look at this guy do his thing. Yeah, R.W. R.W. is doing his thing. Then one day I'm hanging out. I was talking to, I was talking to some preacher guy. I said, How you learn how to do this? I said, I watched R.W. do it. He said, I, saw, I watched R.W. shove his fingers in deaf people's ear. He said, some in there, here. He did all the time. I did what he did. It worked? He said, yeah, it worked. I said, well, ain't that something? Be an imitator. You ain't got to know what's going on. Just imitate me. Imitate. Be an imitator. What do I do? Brother Norville's the best. I used to ask Brother Norville the same question every time he come. Why? Didn't you pay attention the first time? No, I just like to hear him say it the way he says it. Hey, Brother Norval. Hey, Brother Norval. What? What do we do with the devil? And I just sit back and wait for it. Brother Norval, what do we do with the devil? Then you ask it. You got to ask real quiet like, hey, Brother Norval, I got a question. What do you do with the devil? You wait for it. It's like an alcohol seltzer. It's coming. Just say, hey, Brother Norval, what do you do with the devil? And he look at you, he stare at you. You bind him. Cast him out. I like the way he said it real loud and strong. You don't be quiet. Bind him and you cast him out. Bind him and cast him out of what? All your goofy friends. <laughs> he said, Brother Norval. He said, Brother Norval, they got on them. They got mad. Oh, Brother Norval, all you talk about is devils, devils, devils. Oh, there's, there's a devil behind every tree. There's a devil behind every tree. He said, no, there's two devils behind every tree. 
And they got mad at him. A bunch of preachers picking on him. Right? I told you the story. He said, well, I don't see the devil. He said, yeah, I do. He said, open your wallet. I'll show them to you. <laughs> That's funny, but it's God's honest truth. Where's all that stuff you're supposed to have? Plenty and overflow. Enough to disperse and scatter and give. And if you had a millionaire, if you, oh, I'm a millionaire. Good. Give me a million bucks. Then be quiet if you can't. Now, I'm being serious because everybody's got a level. I've been around millionaires. People got more money than they know what to do with. But you give at a different, you give at a different capacity. 20 bucks to somebody's huge. You got millions, give me a million bucks. Oh, well, back up, bro. That's 20 for you and me. Just the level of where you're at. God ain't got no problem with it. Why do you? See what I'm saying? Everybody got a level to go to. What am I trying to say? I'm not talking about money. You understand what I'm saying? The enemy's at work. He's trying to destroy your house. He's trying to mess up your life. He, got, he hates you because God loves you. Don't think it ain't no big mystery. You're in a battle. With, well, I don't believe it. Well, I got news for you. I know more about this thing for a minute here. You're in a battle whether you want to believe it or not. That's why we ain't got no, you, wait, you ever wake up depressed? You wake up sad? You wake up feeling lonely? You don't feel like nobody loves you? You don't feel like nobody cares about you? You don't know what's going on in life? You don't think you could ever this? Some of you had a setback in life. You don't ever feel like you could have a comeback. You feel like my life's over. I'm never really going to turn around. This marriage is never going to be. I got news for you. Who's telling you this stuff? Where's it coming? How's it getting in your ear? Where's it going? I don't know. It's me. It ain't you. Stop thinking it's you. There ain't no you in this thing. Somebody's speaking to you. Why can't you wake up and go, oh, praise God, ladies. Look in the mirror and go, I'm beautiful. I'm, oh, it's easy to love me. I'm the most lovable thing in the world. Gloria, I'm telling you why. Why? Just as easy as you look in this thing. I'm, I can't do nothing. Why can't it? Why, where's it coming from? It's coming from an imaginary, no, an invisible world. That's where this whole world works. The Bible said this, faith is invisible. But when it does its work, it'll pull it in the visible. You understand it? You see it? It's a spirit world. It's an invisible world, but it's real. Just as real, everything you see is temporal. The invisible world will change the world we see. You see it? It's invisible, but it's more real than the tangible. And you're going to change the tangible with the invisible by what you see and say, you could pull in the dimension of seeing. Faith works in the realm that is unseen. Uh, did you get that? So what's, all right, so question. What's more real? The invisible. Because it's eternal. And the stuff you see is temporal, subject to change. That's how it works. That wasn't deep. Did you get that? Did you pull that in? You can change it. Everybody say, I can change it. You got to change it. Amen. There's a way out of temptation. Look at 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Did you see that? Then hath no temptation taken you, which is such as common to man, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted. You see it? Above what you're able, but will give you with the temptation a way to escape. Look at this, right? Which be able to be what? Temptation which able to escape that you may what? Be able to bear it. Everybody say this. If it's in front of me, I can handle it. Like I knew you, right? You can handle it. How many of you had some stuff seem like, oh, man, I don't know, right? I don't think I can do it. You did it. Come on, right? You had stuff in front of you. They're like, I don't know if you can make it. You're like, I'll make it. And you made it. Come on, you see what I'm saying? God, if it's in front of you, you can handle it. I'm telling you, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes like, you ain't going to make it. You'll make it. You understand me? You're going to make it. I don't believe If it's in front of you, you can handle it. How about this? Look at the next challenges. Woo! See, here's the thing. You ever is? I don't know if you're ready, but when you ask for a promotion, any promotion you ask in the kingdom has now just released on the reciprocating side of it an enemy. That's the truth of the matter. Whenever you ask God for a promotion, a prayer, a promise, anything, anything, a reciprocal of that is there's an enemy on assignment to everything. 
Satan comes immediately to steal the word that was sowed. You come in here and you say, I believe it. The minute you receive anything from the kingdom, there's an enemy on assignment to come and take it. That'll help you stand there and fight. I don't give up no stuff. See, when you know this stuff, it's like not fair for the enemy. Good. That's what we come to do, smack him around. But this is the truth. What does Mark chapter 4 say? So we shows the word. These are they by the wayside. So just hear the word immediately. So where the word is being sown or preached, the minute you grab it, an enemy's on assignment to take it. Did you get that? Boy, there's a battle going on, ain't there? Oh, every time I go to church, there's a battle going on. Every time you walk in every second of the day, there's a battle going on. The devil don't want you to hear, and he really don't want you to absorb what you hear. You want to see it? Mark 4. Go to Mark chapter 4, verse 14. Ready? I'm messing him up. Four, Mark 4, 14. You with me? I'm changing the script. So you with me? It's Mark chapter 4. So or so is the word. These are they by the wayside. Oh, yeah. So or so is the what? What happens when I'm sitting where I hear the word? I'm sowing it. I'm sowing the word right now. Guess who you are? You the ground. What kind of ground you got? Yeah, you better be good. Guess what? The seed. This is easy. I can help you preachers all you. I help you. The seed, the seed reveals the soil. So when I throw out the seed, I just look at the soil response to tell you where you're at. Not all of you, because you can't take the majority of you. Most people don't even pay attention. No, they don't, because they don't even grab it. So it's like I talk to four to five people every week. Oh, I've learned this a long time ago. You don't realize that? You think I try to talk to this whole room? You're crazy. I talk to four people a week. Some of you, you know what's crazy? Some of you actually are the same ones every week I'm talking to. All you other people just in here, we're waiting for you to pop like popcorn. Sooner or later, you're going to wake up and get it. Yeah, people don't like it when you tell the truth. But it's all right. I'm, I'm used to it. Go to Mark chapter 4. Let's look at that. Look at it. Sower shows the word. I'm trying to show you something. I hope you get it. Look at Mark 4, 14. Look at 15. Here we go. Sower shows the word. These are they by the wayside. Go to the next one if you got it. Yep. These are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they... Does everybody get this? Have you heard me today? I ain't heard nothing. The devil, don't, he's sleeping on you. He don't even pay attention to you. <laughs> you might have to move down. I got to sit down. They don't want to hear me today. Is this seat taking? I'm taking Josh's chair. All right, watch. Okay, let me show you what's going on here. You sit here like this. Okay, let me get in the camera shot because they can't. It's, it's down. Okay, let me show you what's going on. Here's how it works, all right? Here, I'm going to mess up. The, the, sorry about your bag there. Okay, here's what's going down. I'm up here doing my thing. Preach it. Yeah, you're a champion. You can do great things. Hallelujah. You're wonderful. Beat the devil in the head. Here's you. Here's you. Little, little quiet, cute you. I'm not paying attention to nothing this guy says. What time is this thing going to be over? Kind of hungry. I don't know why he's running around like that. He runs around screaming about everything. See, he just... God, God can do great things. God don't do no great things for me. This is going on in your head. God don't do, God don't do nothing for me. That girl over there, she's kind of cute. Maybe she's single, praise the Lord. She's pretty. A dude over there, he's kind of buff. I might, maybe I'll wink a little bit during worship next week. I'm over here flinging things at you. About great things. Y'all be, Oh, yeah, how, yeah, praise, yeah, pra yeah, praise God, I wish he'd shut up, my God, praise God, but I didn't even want to come, my mama made me come, I was drunk last night, I'm hungover right now, man, you think I'm kidding, some of you smoke dope on the way here, hey, I don't know if God, you know, I, I, <laughs> Pastor Chris, if you knew what I did last night, God, God, I got to get sanctified for a while before the Lord, God, before I believe any of this, but, this is what's going on in your head. That Bible's flying by you like miracle power, and you sitting here worried about what we're going to eat for lunch. The devil don't even pay attention to you. He's like, oh, he got like, he's got an agenda for the day. He's like, oh, who's coming? To, oh, no, nah, I ain't got to worry about them. They don't pay attention to nothing. You're not a problem. 
This is, a, this is Bible, man. It's funny, but it's Bible. Are you serious? You read? That's what happened. But then one of you go, man, I'm going to start believing this stuff. Now, I got, now he's got an assignment. Are oh, you going to believe this? Wait a minute now. Watch out. Because if they got seed, that means they can get a harvest. And if they can get a harvest, if these jokers believe this works once, they're going to believe everything this guy says. And now we got a problem. And hell goes like this. Wah, 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 wah. Alarms are going off. Bam, 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 bam. Buzzers are going. Woo, woo, woo. It's the truth. Oh, all, all that sleeping row, devil's like, don't, don't even pay attention to them. They don't even pay attention. But watch it. You over here today, like, I'm going to get something. All the hell goes, wah, 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 wah. You better get that seed. Look at the Bible. Look what it says. And immediately after they hear, Satan comes what? Pop that up there. Look what it says. It says what? Satan comes immediately. What you mean immediately? Look at it. But when they have heard, you hear some? He comes immediately. Why? Because if you could get that seed to get in your heart and stay there, you got to harvest. So the minute you say, this is why people don't, I'm so bad, I'm telling, you know, you ever watch like magic tricks? Have you ever seen magic tricks? And then you want to know how they did the magic trick. And there's that one guy that tells all the magic tricks. And they all hate him in the magic world. Oh, that's how you get that scarf to come out there. You hit it in your sleeve, right? You know, do the card trick. Like, oh, no, the cards are magically screwed up because they got magnets in them. Come on, you know what I'm saying? Are you paying attention or what? Hello? I am today giving you the tricks of the trade. I don't mean it in a deceptive way. I'm telling you what this joker does. He's hating you right now. He's like, sit there and don't pay attention. I, this is why people don't go to church. You didn't have a fight until you started to believe something. The devil left you alone. Now you go to church and go, I want a better life. He said, all oh, hell's coming at you now. Because if you think you could get something to happen, you might do it, and then you might tell somebody that God can do it. Oh, wait a minute. You get me? You see what I'm saying? You get one of these promises to come to pass, you're going to become addicted to Jesus, my God in heaven. And whatever he said, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You see what I'm saying? It's the tool of the enemy. You heard it, and you get it. The Bible says, look, watch. I'll prove it to you. Look, keep going. We're here. Go to 16. Watch. They're going to see it. This is what it says. Immediately. And these are they likewise which are sown in 30 ground. They heard the word. How many of you heard the word? They got the word of God in their heart. Watch this. Keep going. Look at this. Oh, what happened now? These are they likewise which are sown in you, We missed a little bit. It says affliction and persecution. Affliction and persecution did what? Rose for the word's sake. Affliction and persecution. See it? Have no root in themselves. What happened? That seed didn't root. Why that? And so endure but for a... I hold on to it for a little bit. Come on, guys. I'm talking to you. Uh, I believe this marriage will work. Three weeks. Now you quit. You better see it. After affliction and persecution arose. You see it? Have no root. Why did it rise? For the word's sake. Go back. Watch this. For the word's sake. Have no root in themselves. So endure, but what? For a time. Remember say, for a time. This is cute for a time, but when's time up? After when affliction and persecution is pressure. It's like this. Pressure. Give me that, give me that promise. Give me that word. Yeah, grab that Bible real tight. Real tight. Here the devil. Oh, you got that Bible? You got, I've done this before, but you need to see it. You got the word? Give me that thing. That's what the devil do to you. Oh, you really believe this stuff? <laughs> see how much you believe this, bro. That's what it help when the family get in there and all grab it. Give me the book. Find me. Give me that. 
That's what he's doing to you. You're like, now watch this. Be real loose with it. Like, let me get it. Oh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah, go to church every week, little Christian. I like it. Make you think something's going to happen. But if you don't hold on to it, you ain't going to get no change. All the hell's coming to get this because he knows this is life. See what I'm saying? But if he holds on tight with that word, he gets tired. I mean, he ain't letting that go. Affliction and persecution or pressure arises for the word's sake. You see the pressure and get mad and go, what's God doing to me? God ain't doing nothing to you. The enemy's trying to come to get what you're trying to keep from God. Are you seeing it? Jesus did it best. Come on, look, we're wrapping it up. Ready? Go over here to Luke chapter 4. You see this? Go to Luke 4. You all right? Go to Luke chapter 4. We'll start with like verse 12 or something like that, and we're going to wrap it up. Are you okay? Are you seeing? Isn't this not the truth? You come in here, get all excited. Yay, praise the Lord. Ooh, glory to God. Ooh, hallelujah. Ooh, Jesus. Yeah, hallelujah. Ooh, Tuesday shows up. You're like, I quit. I don't want to go to church. I can't stand. You made me go. Blah, 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 blah. You know what I'm saying, right? This is cute when it feels good. Now I got to stand. I don't feel like standing. Stand. And when you stun all the stand, stand some more. You're like, I want to quit. He said, Jesus come and was tempted of the devil. If Jesus was tempted, guess what? You're going to get tempted too. If Jesus, hey, hey, if Jesus got tempted, you're going to get tempted too. If Jesus got tempted, what you think this is going to be a picnic? Now watch this. Don't get mad at this one either. Why do I got to go through stuff these other people ain't got to go through? I don't know and don't worry about the why. You know what I'm saying? Looks like it's unfair sometimes, don't it? I go through one fight to the next fight to the next fight to the one fight. Why, why can't I just get a break? Stop looking at the breaks as problems and start looking at the breaks like promotions. I'm a good soldier. I can fight in all the fights. You know, I like, a, I, like, I like watching them sometimes. You know, you watch those war movies. Yeah, and all you guys in the military, God bless you, men and women. We thank you so much. But, like, some of you ever watch it? You ever watch them? Like, these guys get an option not to go. They want to go. Like, send me to the worst place in the world. They just get out of one place, and, you know, you got friends like this, or you know somebody like this, or got a family member like this. Like, they get out of one bad environment. They're like, send me to the next mess. Like, why don't you, why don't you, what? You know, it's funny. I, I've been talking about this all day. I was with my partner this week, and he was, he was in the Navy, but he was with Navy SEALs. And he didn't like certain things, and they said, go do this thing, and when you do it, you will be, look, we know what we're doing. Just jump. And he said, man, I ain't jumping in that water. He said, just do what they told you to do. And he said, I could see the guys in the pool down there. They said, just do it. He said, it wasn't even like I hit the water. <laughs> they had me out. I was on the side of the lot. I was like, how in the world they do that? They're experts at what they do. They're experts at combat. You getting it? You're going to get it in a minute. Why'd God send me back in? I'm an expert at war. I'm going to run around the room. You didn't get it. Why, God, do I got to... I'm an ex, I'm, I've been military trained in the things of the Spirit. Send me in, God. <laughs> Just drop me in. Airdrop me. What? I know how to win. I ain't never lost yet. That's what the kingdom. Why they send the special op, special forces on special missions? They can handle it. You can't just send a rookie in there. They get messed up. Why, God, do I got another battle to go here? Because you can handle it. Whoo! Now, like some of the stuff nonsense the devil does, but you know what I'm saying? How do you go into territory where nobody else can do it and do it? I'm a special mission guy. Come on, somebody. You're going to, how does an Isaac go to a famine and produce a harvest? I'm a special mission kind of guy. I pay attention to what the Lord said. I sow in famine and reap the harvest that no man can see, but my God already made it come to pass. You see what I'm saying? I got the blessing in me. I'm going somewhere to explode it. Amen? Now, get this part. What happened with, what happened with Jesus? Jesus gets there, and they say, what? He said, the devil came and said, hey, Jesus. He got tempted. What did he give him? He gave him the word. Got to understand this. There is power in the spoken word of God. Are you here? So now here's what you got to do. You got to have the principles to win. Now, I'm going to say this. Give me two minutes. We're going home. I need you to get this. I'm going to have you out of here in f three minutes. In two minutes, I'm going to give you a miracle thing. This is where you really got to pay attention in one minute, and you better get this thing. 
I understand when you're speaking the word of God, it doesn't look like nothing's changing. It's the most powerful force on the face of the earth. Speak it anyway. You don't have to understand it. You still got to do it. Listen to what I'm saying. You might speak it, and it might seem like there ain't nothing happening doing this. Everything is happening because there's more power in that word than that's in you. Stand up on your feet. You better get this now. I'm telling you, Jesus did this. This is exactly what he did. Now watch this. Watch the devil. He's always going to try to take you in a place that you don't want to go, so don't go there. He come to Jesus and said, hey, Jesus, do me a favor. He said what? He said, turn that bread, that stone into bread. And Jesus said, I'm not going to do it because here's the thing. I'm not going to use this to satisfy my soul. Get what I'm saying? He said what? He said, take your anointing. Or take your ability. See, can you understand something? Why would the devil challenge him in three areas that he challenged him in specifically? So where are you going to get challenged the most? In the arena of your soul. It was a soulish thing. He's starving. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights. The Bible says that when Jesus was hungry, here come the enemy. It said, take that rock and turn it to bread. It wasn't just a sideshow trick. It was use your power and your anointing and your stuff to make something that's non available to your soul, available to your soul. So you basically he said this. He said, take the soulish hit against it and see me, let me watch you change. Jesus said, no, I'm not going to do it. So what am I trying to show you? The enemy is going to come and speak to your mind, your will, and your emotions in your soulish realm more than any realm. Because he wants you to forfeit destiny. Don't believe in yourself. Don't think you can. Don't expect to come back. No, no, no. Stop, stop. Your mind, your will, and your emotions. He's going to keep you emotionally messed up. He said what? Well, he said no. He said, and then he would do. He spoke the word. You know what you're going to have to do to your mind? Speak the word. You know what you're going to have to do to your emotions? Tell it what to feel. You know what you're going to have to do with your soul? You're going to have to explain to your soul. The Bible says teaching, saving of your soul in James. What do you do? You've got to teach your soul the word. I don't want to. You make it do it with the word of God. That's why Romans 12, 1, 2 says what? It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service, that you may know what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Transform, not conform. What's the Bible say about it? I don't want to do the Bible. You better do the Bible. What's the next thing he said? He said, throw yourself down from the place where God wants to put you. Guess what the next thing's going to be? You're going to have the greatest battle in this. Who am I? Your identity. Your identity. Take yourself down from there. Put yourself up. Put yourself up. Put you down. Up, down. He said, nah, I ain't throwing myself down. God put me here. I got to stay in here. And I'm telling you, listen to me. It's about your identity. The enemy is going to challenge you on your identity. Who you think you are? How come your ministry didn't happen just yet? Don't you know you're just a woman? What kind of woman think like that? I'm telling you what's in your head. I ain't telling you what I'm saying. I'm telling you what's in your head. Don't you know this? Don't you know that? No, 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 no. Even the men. I don't know this, that, that. I don't know who I am. We're a fatherless generation running around trying to belong somewhere. Last thing he said this, he said, you worship me. He said, I ain't worshiping you all the days of your life. You can forget it. Only one you worship is the Lord God Almighty. I ain't worshiping you. What's he saying? Here's what he said. I'll give you the fast track to everything you want. Jesus said, no, I'm going to get everything I want, but it's going to cost me my life. You got to give up your life. The enemy is going to always try to get you in a place of compromise. Three things he's going to come at. Your soulless arena, your identity arena, and the last thing is this. Compromise your life. And this one's a big one because your life ain't your own. There are so many people selfish with their life, it's ridiculous. Well, don't you know I'm here for me? You ain't here for you a minute of your life. You ain't here a minute of your life. I'm telling you, I never said this in the years I've been preaching he comes after your soul. He comes after your identity. And this one's the biggest one. And I'm going to stand here just for this reason. And I want them guys to hear me. And I want you to hear me. Your life's not yours, guys. This, is, this thing called earth is whether you're going to lay down your life and pick up the life in Christ. This ain't, I get to do what I want to do. Get to be what I want to be. I used to tell the kids this. I was wrong. You know, you could be whichever you want to be. I, used to, I had to change it. I was like, no, guys, time out. Daddy's got to get it right. Here's the deal. You need to pray to God and ask him what he wants you to be. I'm not limiting what you can see, but I need you to be who you're supposed to be in Christ. Because if you're not on assignment for earth, I don't know what heaven's going to miss. Are you here today? I want you to know how valuable you are. Look at me today. I'm done. It's go today's done. But I need you to hear this. 
Your life is precious. Their life's not yours. You can't just do what you want to do with it. Go where you want to go with it. Think like you want to think with it. This is all you got. This is it. I got an, what are you going to get? An 80, 90 year run in the earth to make a difference in your life and your family. Even if you just did it for you and your family and even let it last the world. Don't you know this, your life's not your own? You were bought with a price. You got to ask God, God, man, what can I think about me? How do I see me? What am I called to do? Who am I called to be? How do I understand this thing? I'm not here for me. My life is not my own. To you I belong, amen? We just ain't singing a song. It's about understanding, God, I'm here for what? I'm serious. What are you going to be here? No, okay, somebody's going to be here 120 years. God bless you. What are you going to do in 120 years in the earth that's going to make a reward laid up for you in heaven, amen? Are you going to keep your life? Oh, no, I'm not giving my life. I'm just going to live for the here and now. This is a vapor. It's a flash. It's like a blink. It's not even a whisper. It's over. You spend eternity with Jesus. I'm here to surrender everything I got. You should be too. God, it's about me and you. Lift your hands to heaven and close your eyes. Just have that place of dedication. That's all I'm saying. God wants to do so much with your life. You're so, guys, I want you to know you're so precious to him. I know maybe you think your preciousness wore off, but it didn't. I know you might think right now you're tarnished, but you're not. I know right now you might think you can't do, but you can. I don't know what you're going through today, but I know this. Don't let the enemy rob another minute of your life. God loves you so much. He's got so much planned for you. Your mistake is not greater than his purpose. Your mistake is not greater than his purpose. Your mistakes are not greater than his purpose. He's overcome your mistakes because of his purpose in your life. And it's going to empower you to change your life forever. Just bow your heads right now. Just bow your heads right now. And if you're in here today and you need to get right with the Lord, get right with the Lord. If you're in here today, get right with the Lord. I'm telling you right now. There's all you do is cry out the name Jesus. Amen? That's all you got to do. Listen, if you're in here today and you don't know, you don't know if you're going to heaven. You don't know what's going on. You don't know what's up. You don't know what's happening. I want you to just do this out loud with me right now today. I just, if you're in here today and you say, God, Lord Jesus, I got to get things right. If you're in here today, you say, I got to get some stuff right. I got to get some stuff fixed. I got to know for sure I'm going to heaven. I got to know right now. I just got to start my, my season fresh and anew. If that's you and you're in here today, I want you to just pray with me right now. That's all I want you to do. I want you to say, say Jesus. Just say, Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my heart. Change my life. Rearrange my plans. Let me pick up your plan. Let me get your purpose. Let me get your change. Come into my heart. Change me. Change me. Transform me. Transform me. Move in my life. Move in my life. Move in my midst. Move in my midst. And right now, we're going to pray over you. Just say this in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm going to pray over you right now. If you're serious about God, about having a comeback, some of these eyes, I've seen this in the spirit. Scales are going to fall off your eyes. Blinders are getting ready to fall off your eyes. And the people you love that you've been holding to want them to see, if it doesn't hit you, it's going to hit them. I want you to be serious about this right now. Blinders and limitations are being removed right now, today. This place is going a whole new level. Amen? Whole new level right now in Jesus' name. Scales are going to be removed. And before we pray, I, I felt this. I was in the back, and I felt this really strong right now. Just put your hands down. I feel like there's some of you in here. Keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed. There's some of you in here today who are carrying a burden of pain. What the, someone has done to you that's been holding you back. And I believe that this morning, as we get ready to pray for we're you this morning, that we're going to pray over you, and you're going to see that released in your life. And scales. with every head bowed, the scales are going to come off your eyes. Gonna go. We're going to pray that. But there's some of you specifically that, that you've been carrying this, just this burden mm. uh, of just of pain, of hurt. And I, we want to pray for you this morning and have that removed. If that's you, would you come just in. mind just waving your hand at me right now? Say, that's me this morning. I, I can't, I can't. Sometimes it crushes Hallelujah. you. And I want to pray for you specifically for that right now. Yes. I know, yeah, I see some of you, some of you that raised your hands. I saw your faces when I was in the back. I knew it was you today. And I want to pray for you right now. And mm. the pastor Chris is going to pray. But let me just pray specifically for that right now. God, I thank thank you right now. God, yes. I thank you that, that you gave your life, God, that even in the midst of the pain, God, that they would find purpose. God, I thank you that you came to heal. You came to heal hearts. You came to heal lives. You came to bring restoration. And I thank you right now that there's no pain greater than, than what you can't cover. And Lord, I thank you right now that your anointing would come on them right now, mm -hmm. that it would hurt, those hurts in their heart, God, would be healed and whole in the name of Jesus. You came, God, to bring wholeness to their heart, to their soul. God, and I thank you 
you right now. Yeah, maybe it's been a, a painful season, but that painful season, it says weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And God, I thank you right now for covering each and every one of them, that that pain as they begin to let it go, you have to let it go. You've got to release it and say no more. I will not let it hold me back anymore. I will not let it limit me anymore. Right now, God, I thank you that your anointing you. comes upon them afresh and anew, breaking every single burden, yes. destroying every yoke, that what the enemy meant for evil, you've designed for even greater, God. And that right now in this moment, we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. You're so precious to God, guys. Just lift your hands to heaven and just surrender. I declare and I decree today. You've got so much potential within you. I pray you see. Now they asked the great man of God one time, they said, Would you lay hands on these people? And he said, Ah, uh, no. I don't think I'm going to. And they said, why? He said, because I can't give you anything greater than God already gave you. I want you to see the true you. Understand the wonderful, beautiful you. And have the greatest understanding of all that God's got a plan for you. That's greater than the plan you could see for you. Today, Lord. Let scales fall from their eyes. Let blinders be removed. And let wisdom be a light to show them the greatness that's inside of them. Loving our life, surrendering our life, and following after the life you have for us in Christ. Today, let it be a decision-altering day to come after you, serve you, not be hindered by the enemy, but be fulfilled by destiny. Let vision become clear. Let purpose become clarified. And may discipline be totally inspired in our life to be everything God's called us to be. We bless these people right now, Lord, for the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, you touched them to them. Let them go in your power. Let them walk in your ability. And let them see themselves the way you see them. Let them feel about themselves. The way you feel about them. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ideas about you are greater than the ideas you have about you. So, Lord, let them see and let them know. And let them walk in the fullness of who they are. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And everybody said, amen. Why don't you clap like you got victory? You got it, guys. Amen. Listen, we love you. Believe in you. We'll see you Wednesday night. You're doing great. Keep up the good work. Amen. Glory to God. You want to go to Bible school, go see Miss Roxanne. She's waving in the back. God bless you.